Can you believe it? We're back for another broadcast GG video after a long time. It's been a long hiatus. Welcome back, everybody. All right, so we have a new release of the tool ready for Overwatch 2. So I'm going to be showing you why this is convenient. Um, so normally in a broadcast, you're building a show. You're going to have to do all of the editing of team names and adding the text. Shout out to Clockwork Vendetta. Old european overwatch team um you know you'd have to drag in all this stuff what if i told you it didn't have to be this hard what if i told you it could be it's ready to go in a couple minutes well that's what we have going on with the broadcast tool this is the exact same um tools and resources we used for shows that blizzard pays it paid us for in the past way back in the day and uh where can you find it well, um, after we stopped doing the shows, the, the team agreed to open source and basically make all of this free. And uh, now I'm getting back into starting to work on this again. Uh, so we re I rebuilt the uh, rebuilt the tool so that we could add in the Overwatch 2 characters, as well as change the, uh, the team layout to five players, as well as all of the new maps, including stuff like Push. So, how does this work? Well, we're in the uh, release candidate 2.30. So, uh, we're going to download an installer here. So, it's this exe. You don't need the other stuff there. Just go ahead and click that exe. <clears throat> it's a little large, but... It's magical. I, I swear. All right, cool. So, we're going to click on that. Where'd it go? All right. Sometimes launching it from the browser doesn't quite work. All right, so you're going to see this warning. Uh, I promise we're not stealing information. So we're going to click into more info and then we're going to run anyway. Then you get this window that asks you where you want to put the broadcast folder. So I'm going to direct it to a very specific place. I like to put them all together um, here. Again, the broadcast folder it doesn't really matter. You can put this anywhere in the computer and that's part of why this installer is a thing. So you just make a folder where you want all of the files so i'm gonna go ahead into bgg hope this works and install and it goes to work funny fun fact i already tried recording this once with streamlabs obs um you're gonna yet answer yes to a couple prompts here uh it's gonna ask for access to things from windows command shell as well as nginx or it did before cool look at that we have a show can i move this Ooh, all right um so we have all of these scenes look at these fancy things oh by the way see how it's kind of lagging a little bit that is because in my settings or okay so there's this is the annoying thing about obs or that like when you're learning it it's it's difficult to know there's two different things the collections of scenes that you have and then the profile so the profile has all of the um like what the output of the stream is like all the back end stuff here so i go to video do you see how it is at 30 fps so i'm going to up that to 60 and we're going to see here that the transitions are way smoother Ooh ah cool so this is all set up to go for um being able to make a show all you have to do now is take the desktop tool which loaded over here and check this out so um you just enter in the team names was it young and beautiful and now i'm going to click on this to load the images awkward vendetta <laughs> hope i'm not leaking anything nah and then young and beautiful and now check this out Ta -da! Young and beautiful on the right, awkward pinned on the left. We can even change the colors. Let's match that pink. And let's match that purple. And this one looks close. Check that out. Look at the, look at the little accents. And in fact, when we go to teams, you can see the, the color a little more prominently. Ooh. Ah. So yeah, this is what the tool does. And instead of having to right click and edit all these different elements, you can just go right into here and uh, yeah, select the heroes. 
Um, here, let's go ahead and just change it up here a bit. Junker Queen. Ah. Uh, Sombra. Reaper. Zenyatta. Let's keep Lucio. I don't even know what comp this is. Yeah, you see how quickly it changed? So you can prep all of this information ahead of time. And you can actually export this. Uh, once we set it up, see, away team is the right side. So export away team. We're going to do YAB for young and beautiful. And uh, we're going to export home team. Clockwork Vendetta. And now if I change all of this, blah, blah. Just have a whole team of Junker Queens because that's honestly the best comp right now. Look at that. Um, we can actually import the away team again to YAB. Look at that. We're back to normal. We can even import. And we have some defaults. Boom. Ta da. All right, cool. So um, this is. This is pretty fun. Okay, the other thing too to show is the map pool. And my favorite thing about this is that um, as you add on more maps, it actually will live update. So it fits. So so normally you you would do that like you know you you would you would you would uh, make the changes before you switch to the scene and then click update, and then when you go over to the map pool, then it looks pretty slick. There you go. See, just three. And then even so, let's say <clears throat> Awkward Vendetta won the first. Let's go ahead and import the away team again. Okay. Um, and let's say Clockwork Vendetta won two to one there. But Young and Beautiful won two to zero Circuit Royale. When you click update, it will actually put the logos and the logic to you see how this is a this has more uh, uh color now All right so you can you can actually have um yeah showing which teams won when which maps rather pretty cool um there is a bracket as well this one's a little complicated and something we'll probably go back to but there's a bunch of uh i have it all written out in the wiki also, yeah, the tool sometimes is a little bit slow to work on the performance. I think I want to do a better, I want to do the bracket in a better way. Potentially, this is a place we could integrate Sheets IO or something. Um, but let me let me show you what it what it might look like here. Um, it's just gonna load load in these. Just this real quick. Boom, ba doom, boom. Downloads. Port. Oh no, it's here. Look, we're going data. I'll just tap it out. All right, and now I'm going to click update teams, and then that will allow me to actually place these teams into the bracket. After the update teams is done, so yeah, yeah, we got to work on the performance of this. Potentially might just change this all together. But for now, it works. <laughs> I don't know why this is so slow. Maybe because I'm recording outside of OBS. I'm recording OBS with Loom, which is funny. Come on. Work. It didn't used to be like this. Maybe something's wrong with the... Uh... Yeah, this is part of the testing, right? So go ahead and test it and let me know how it performs on your computer. Let's say we have Clockwork Vendetta versus Tats. Update the bracket. There you go. They're right in there. Right on the bracket. Uh, we also have a double elimination scene, but you can only fit so many, right? Um. So yeah, in any case, uh, some more improvements to do, but what I'm looking for help on is, uh, this is free. Use it for all of your shows. Uh, I know there's a lot more going on in Collegiate. There's a lot going on in just, you know, people want to throw together a show and have something that looks really good. You replace all these logos. Oh yeah, let's actually go ahead and replace that as well. This ended up being a little longer of a demo than I was expecting, but it's good. So um, we'll go to the wiki because this has all of the informations. 
And if you actually scroll down more, you can see in the show what these logos go to. Look, 16, that's utility 16 is the in-game. Um, and then the transition. Okay, um, I'm pretty sure image 15. Yep, so the lower right is that. Where's the transition, though? Oh, stinger. Okay, yeah, so image two is the instant replay scene logo and the stinger transition. So let's go ahead and change that. So if you go into general, image two, right, stinger transition. So there's two different places where stinger transitions are used. Uh, sorry, I should say this. There's two different versions of the transitions. Um, so that way you can have maybe the event name versus the organization that's putting on the event, for example. So let's go ahead and put in Clockwork Vendetta for here. And let's just kind of look again. So when changing to the in-game scene, instant replay map tool, map pool, team one, team two. So what this means is that this logo that shows on ahead of anything that has to do with the game and not the casters will be that logo. So let's, do you see how it was the broadcast GG one? You know, team one, team two. Let's go ahead and now we update. Okay. Yeah, there, gonna, there might be some warnings like that on the first time you run it because we just don't have images just loaded there. Ta-da! See? That was a logo we just added. Um, And if we go to the in-game... Oh, wait, hold on. The casters... See, there's nothing there because, again, that's what the tool just warned us. So it said... Uh, <clears throat> I think image 15 is it? Stinger logo when changing to desk scenes. Basically, when your analysts are about to talk or when your caster is about to be shown. So let's go ahead and put Young and Beautiful's logo there. I don't play games despite all of those launchers. So cool. So now we have Team 1 and Team 2. This is that Clockwork Vendetta logo I was talking about. Now, when we go to the casters, ta da! See, it's the other logo. So yeah, this is pretty powerful stuff. You can replace everything except for the Powered by Broadcast GG. You can go ahead and edit the HTML files if you want to change that. Um, or if you ask me nicely, I can show you. Um, let's, let's add in the logo there as well. So <clears throat> the in-game scene, I have a little screenshot here, 16. That is the logo of the in-game scene. Put in Young and Beautiful. There. All right. So now, if we go to the in-game scene, see the logo's already there. Boom. And so you can see how you can customize everything slowly uh, over time. There's also the away screen. I might as well show this. We've already done so much stuff. So the way to configure this is that there are up to four slots that we can show, four matches that we can show. The tool needs to know which matchup is happening. So the way we do this is we actually, in the general tab here within the tool, we're actually showing, this is the uh, like the syntax for saying match one, match two. Um, but here is the text that actually shows up. So if I change that, it'll say match one of the day, right? So whatever here you, you put will be... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be that. So, and since in my bracket, let's just go ahead and put this in round one here. This is normally where you'd set this up. This is this is where you'd set up the matchup. So, update bracket. <clears throat> and you can see there how that matchup is done. So, um, as you update the show, say, for example, let's say... Awkward Vendetta has a special place in my heart because they invented that Torb, Torbjorn strategy that was hilarious. Um, okay, this is this is how we do it here. I remember this is a little bit janky. We basically go and use the 10 spot, so it's gonna say three to two, but it'll show that this team won. Okay, we gotta fix that. That's a little that's a bug. Don't worry about that. Anyways, just leave it like this. Gotta fix that. And then you can move on to the next matchup of 
Aqua Quintet versus Young and Beautiful. And then, if you don't want the others to show, you can just remove like so. You would only have those two. Look, look at that. It's amazing. Let's, 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 let's just close it out here. Um, where are the socials? This is in the... Um, so this text, it might be a little easier to see um, in the notepad. So let's just open up a new file here. Uh, we can, Let's replace this. So let's say you wanted to shout out your Twitch. Um, my Twitch channel. And then... I know it's a little confusing. We we had this bolded here. I'm going to actually go ahead and remove that portion. So basically, this is the one thing you have to have. You have to have the div span class, which shows the Twitch logo. You can have my Twitch channel. And I'm actually going to delete up until we get to the... So, so, so this is the portion we need for the my Twitch channel. And then for the Twitter... Um, I'm going to put the Twitter name. Boom. That should work. Let's find out. We copy that. We're going to put this into utility 10. Yep. You might want to leave the bolds in there. Now that I think about it. So let's put this. What if I do that for the whole thing? If everything will be bold, because I'd never terminated the bold. Let's go ahead and just live code. Ta-da! Yeah, so we have some more information on the syntax there. But then this, in the general tab. Ah, okay. General tab. Well, maybe we don't. Oh, here it is. The away scene. So this is the default code. Uh, default code. And then these are other notes to have there. And you get a little HTML going on. Anyways, um, ended up being 18 minutes, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, I want people to help test this. Uh, we're going to work towards also making one for Valorant. But it looks pretty slick still. I know that the tool sometimes gives some hiccups, so I, I want to hear what you're using it for and feel free to use it. Just go and use it in the world. I just want to know. Uh, just just let me know like what you're using it for because I want to keep making this uh making this better, making it easier to make esports broadcasts. So all right. Thanks everyone. We'll catch you later.